Hello, Math 30-2, and welcome to your first lesson on probability. This lesson, you will find later on, is very similar to the lesson we had before with permutations and combinations. It build, permutate, this builds up on permutations and combinations. But before we get into that, we must first look at some terminology and basics of review. So, here's some beginning terminology. First of all, a trial. A trial is an event, or a trial is one thing. So if I'm flipping... If I roll a dice once and I want a 1, like it says in the opening thing here, my and it's 1 and 6, my trial would be, my first trial, I roll a 3, that's my trial. It's rolling it once is a trial. An experiment is having more than one trial. Normally, if you want to see if something works, you do more than one trial. Okay? So that's how we get. So if I roll a dice 5 times to see if I get a 1, that would be an experiment, because I've rolled it 5 times to help me get the probability. Now, the outcome is the result of carrying out the experiment. That is my outcome. My outcome is my result, my result in carrying out the experiment. Next one here is sample space. My sample space can be, well, if I'm rolling a dice, it could be one, two, three, four, five. So sample space is all the possible events or outcomes that you can have. Next one is event. Okay? So event is your is an event is uh, a subset of the sample space. Okay, so it consists of one or more possible outcomes. So my event would be if I rolled it three times, and I could have got my events could have been heads, heads or tails, and stuff like that, or rolling a two and a three. Those were my events. So to donate probability, we use the term PA. This is key. This is to donate probability. Okay. So probability of the donation is PA. Now, this means probability of A. Now, when we have a probability of A, we look at it. Well, what is the probability of getting zero? That means it cannot happen. Can we have less than zero? Is there any chance that you have that you're less than zero? It's impossible. The lowest you could get is zero. Just like, is there? can you ever be more than 100%, get 100% uh, chance of winning? No, 100% is guaranteed to win. There is no more than a guarantee, which is 100%. So that's why our probability must be between 0 and 1. We can't have a negative. We can't be over 100%. Next part is, what happens if probability is equal to 0? That is an impossible outcome. If the probability is equal to 0, it is impossible. That cannot happen. An example of that would be rolling a 7. If I was to roll a 7 on a standard 6-sided die, well, what is the probability of that? It's impossible. It cannot happen. There is no 7. Next one here is probability of 1. If I said you have to pick between heads or tails on a coin, well, there's only heads and tails on a coin. So the probability of that is actually 1, of getting heads or tails. There we go. And the last one is equally likely. So an experiment is if a set is equally likely, then the probability of a particular event is given by a formula. So if you can make a formula for it, everything is equally likely. So here's an example here. A fair die is rolled. What is the probability of rolling a 1? Okay? So we're going to do this one first. So here's part 1. I state the sample space. So the sample space is already stated. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. There is my sample space. That's all the outcomes we could get. Right? It's all outcomes. So part two is, what is my favorable outcome? So what is my favorable outcomes in the sample space? Well, it's only a one. Let's highlight a number. Part three says, okay, part three, are the outcomes equally likely? Well, is it equally likely that I get a one out of two or a two out of it? Or, or sorry, if, if that I get a one or a two? Are they both equally likely? Yes. So yes, they are all equally likely. All right, so part four states, where's the probability of the event? Well, my probability of the event is one out of six, and that is it, because I have one out of a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. That is what I have. Okay, so now let's try the next one. A circular spinner divided into four equal sectors labeled clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. Ah, so it's the four 
Hearts of cards. Clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. Look at it. Clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. When it is spun, what is the probability that it lands on hearts? So, let's look at number one. There's four even spaces. So we want the sample space. We could have a club. We could have a heart or diamond. We could have a heart. Or we could have a spade. So that's my sample space. That's all I could choose from. So we're going to say they are equal sectors. It says here they are equal sectors. That's key. Now, part two says the favorable outcome. My favorable outcome is a heart. So it's just a heart. We're going to look at number three. If the outcomes are equally likely. Well, it's one in four to get a heart, one in four to get a spade. They are equally likely. They're all the same amount. They're equally spaced. So yes. And what is my probability? Number four is one in four is my probability. Because I have four total outcomes. And I only have one that I want out of it. So it's one in four. Now, complementary events. When a spinner in review B... Okay, so we're just going to skip that and go on. So, the event does not land on hearts. Is called the complement. This is very much similar to what we did in Mac 20. So when it doesn't land on hearts, so the event that you don't want to happen is the complement. It is the event that we don't want to happen is normally the complement. It's everything else that could happen in the subset or outside of the subset that we want. So in our universal sets, everything else that can happen. So they're complementary events. So an event. So a complementary event of flipping a heads on a coin would be a tails. That's everything else that could happen. Complementary event of this one here would be two, three, five, or two, three, four, five, and six, because it's everything else that could happen. Those are the complementary events. Next. So that's pretty much it. So basically, our complementary events, the event wanted, uh, added to the events that we don't want must always equal to 100%. Okay? So I can't say if we're rolling a die, a 2 and a 1 are complementary events. It's, a 2 is part of the complementary event of a 1, but there's also a 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So we have a lot more, so they must add up to equal 1. This here is key. Okay? Or, PA and PA naught, there's two ways of writing it, which must equal to one, which is 100%. Next is compound events. Remember way back to those tree diagrams? We're bringing them back. So, here we go. Our first event here. A compound event is often used a table, a chart, or a table, a chart, or a tree diagram. Okay? So, two coins are tossed. And it says, the number of heads is counted. What is the probability of attaining two heads? Well, we go all the way down here, and we have, it says, we're just going to skip ahead, go to the tree diagram to help us do it. So we have in coin one, first coin we flip. We do that first. Zoom in. First coin we flip. Well, I can either get heads or tails, right? That's all I could get. Next coin we flip, we can get heads or tails. If we get heads, we can still get heads or tails in the next coin. If we got tails, we can get heads or tails. So altogether, my outcomes are heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. So we have four possible outcomes. So what is the possibility of getting two heads? Of two heads, well, that's one out of one, two, three, four. That is one out of four. Of getting two tails, that's only this one. So that's one out of four. Getting one head and one tail. Well, I could do this or this. So it's one out of four plus one out of four, which gives me two out of four, which is equal to one out of two. That's how we do that one. So here's an example. 
Now we're going between a spinner and a head, or and flipping coins. Okay, so complete the tree diagram, show all the outcomes for the experiment. So let's complete the diagram. So here we could go heads or tails, heads or tails, okay, heads or tails here. And if we get through, we could go heads or tails. Now here again, we have heads or tails, heads or tails, heads or tails, heads or tails. So, these are all my possible outcomes. I could go one, tails, heads. Or I could go one, tails, tails. Or I could go two, heads, heads. Or I could go two, heads, tails. Or I could go two, tails, heads. Or we could look at this one, two, tails, tails. Or we could go three heads, heads. Or three heads, tails. Or three tails, heads. Or three tails, tails. Okay? So basically what happened here, we are doing three different events, and we want to know the probability of all of them. So we have the spinner, then we do coin one and coin two. So we have three different things, so I or we organize it in a tree diagram, which makes it nice. Normally we have three completely different things, Tree diagrams work wonderfully. So, here we go. Complete tree diagram, we're done. How many elements are in the sample space? Oh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 12 elements. Show how many you can use the fundamental counting principle to answer question B. Hmm. Well, fundamental counting principle. So basically, I have three options for the first one. That's three, right? That's my first one. I have three different options. I have three. Then I have two options, and then I have two options. And it must be in that order. So it's three times two times two. There's our fundamental counting principle. That's how we could do it. That equals to 12. Hey, that works. Because we have spinner, we could get one or three. Three options. For coin one, we could get either heads or tails. There's two options. This one, we could get heads or tails. Another two options. Huh. Are all the outcomes equally likely? Well, yeah, they are. Yes. State the probability of attaining three head or a, a three and two heads. So we want a three and two heads. That's only one out of twelve. Okay. A prime number and exactly one tail. Oh, prime number and exactly one tail. So if we look at this, we're going to say two and three. We're going to use those as our prime numbers. Two and three. One isn't quite really a prime number. So prime number and exactly one tail. So I have one here, and I have one there, one there, and one there. So I have four. So that is four out of twelve, which is the same as one out of three. Okay? Here we go. Now, last one, and we're done. And you could, and I'll see you tomorrow and we work on the assignment together. A blue die and red die are rolled. The outcome, th uh, the outcome three on the blue die and four on the red die can be represented in the order pairs. So here, every time we're using die or numbers, we tend to make a grid like this. Okay? So show all the possible outcomes. We could go one, comma, one. 2 or 2 comma 1 3 comma 1 4 comma 1 5 comma 1 6 comma 1 now here we go 1 comma 2 2 comma 2 3 comma 2 or 3 comma 2 are you making mistakes 4 2 5 2 6 2 here we have 3 Oops, one, three, two, three, 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 and here we're going to have four, four, three, five, three, six, three, and one, four, one, or two, four, three, four, 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 four. 
four, and we have six, four. I'm just going to finish this out. So there we go. Now we have that done. Okay. So how many points are in a sample space? Well, if you look at this, this is a six by six grid. So we have six by six grid. So that's 36. So is there another way of doing it? Well, we have six options for the first one and six options for the second one. So there's two different things we're rolling. And we have six options for the first one multiplied by six in the second one. Same thing as there, except this would be very messy and a huge factor. Okay, list the events. The same number appears on each die as a subset of the sample space. So, so list this, uh, the same number appears on each die. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have, if you have a one, one, you can have a two, two, you can have a three, three, and we can have a four, four, and we can have a five, five, we could have a six, six. So there's a sample space. Okay, now it says, state the probability of the following events. The same number appears on both dice. So we have six, there's one, two, three, four, five, six outcomes out of a total of 36, which is the same as one and six. So a different number appears on each die. That's every other outcome. So that's Every other outcome besides that, that's going to be our complement. So it really wants the complement, which is 30 out of 36, which gives me 5 out of 6. How can answer B help to determine, or the second determine the first one? They are the complement. Or I could have added them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So there's 30. So 30 out of 36. So these are the complements of each other. So I'll see you tomorrow and we'll work on the assignment together. Thank you very much for watching.